Today we're going to turn this garage into an art gallery and studio. We partnered with our friends at Benjamin Moore to pretty much paint every square inch of this space. But we also built some really cool small furniture pieces like a swing that holds your wine. All right, so this is the garage we're renovating. It's a one car garage. It has so many different surface materials. We got rough stucco that's the same as the house. We have some plywood paneling of all different types. We have exposed rafters, which should look awesome. And we got a window and a bunch of other things to tape off. So let's do a little demo and then get started. Okay, so this old work cabinet has definitely got to go. It had a little bit of mouse poop in it and uh, the laminate is delaminating. We're also gonna take out this guy and this bookcase as well. That we're gonna try to save. This will be firewood, and this is just going to scrap. So this shelf is nailed to the wall, and then has these stretches sort of hanging down from the rafters. So I think we'll just cut these, pull this off, and then figure out how to detach those from the rafters. So this bookcase is worth saving. We'll probably use it for outdoor use. It's pretty rustic, so, and it's just nailed in, so get, pull it off. So whoever installed the garage door added in some two by sixes for support, but they left them long. So we're just gonna trim those flush and then probably add in a few more screws just to reinforce it. It's an uninsulated roof, which is good because we're gonna get this nice vaulted ceiling effect. But these rafters or the bottom parts of these trusses are pretty cracked up in a couple places. So it's probably fine, but we're gonna go ahead and add some two by fours just to reinforce them. I actually kind of enjoy painting. I find it relaxing since you can just methodically apply it. The prep and cleanup though is not really that much fun. Oh. But I did discover that adding a brush to a drill or impact driver is a great cleaning hack. Long bristles can really get into cracks and crevices like the tracks on a window and really scrub out the dirt and dust. I use painter's tape to protect the electrical outlets and some matte board to loosely wrap the water heater that was in the back corner. We're going to paint the floor so I'm not too worried about the occasional splatter here or there, but we did want to keep the majority of the wall paint off of the floors just so that the specialty floor paint will adhere nicely to the existing concrete. For the walls and ceiling, we're using Benjamin Moore Regal Select in Simply White. When I'm dealing with a lot of different textures, I prefer a flat or matte finish as opposed to an eggshell or satin. I just find that reflectivity highlights textural differences. We've used Regal Select for quite a few projects and what I really like about it is that it doesn't splatter, goes on smoothly whether you're rolling or spraying, it covers really well, and the 7500 Benjamin Moore retailers are independently owned, so when you buy a can of Benjamin Moore paint, you can feel good about supporting local, small businesses. It's also just a great value that saves you money in the long run. Some other brands might seem cheaper, but could require three to four coats, while you could do the job with Benjamin Moore in just one or two coats. I picked up a small handheld sprayer to do the rough stucco and some of the detail work around the rafters, but a good old fashioned roller is great for covering the flat surfaces. Brushing a metal surface can be a little bit tricky to not leave streaks, so I made sure to spray the inside of the garage door. We covered the water heater when we were spraying the whole space just to keep paint out of the air intakes on the heater, but the heater will also be somewhat visible so we went back in with a finer adjustment on the nozzle of the sprayer and covered up most of the tan water heater with white paint. 
These industrial shelves were in this space when we started, and we painted those white as well. This is going to serve as sort of a visual barrier and as a place to store small sculptures. Painting floors white may seem like a bold move that will result in a whole lot of constant cleaning, but floors are also one of the easiest surfaces to paint, and I can paint a floor in the same amount of time as it takes me to mop one. I have tried quite a few floor paints and I find that the Benjamin Moore floor and patio paint holds up really well. I went a little too light on the first coat, so I did have to go back and do a second one. But floor painting this entire garage only takes me about 10 to 15 minutes. Even though I don't really like doing the prep work for painting, removing the tape is a lot of fun. There's something just satisfying about pulling it off and seeing nice crisp edges. We replaced the laundry unit and moved the shelves in to serve as a visual barrier for this functional back corner of the garage. So far the focus of the renovation has been applying a lot of white paint to a lot of flat surfaces, but we don't want the space to just feel like a white box. So we want to add a little bit of differentiation in terms of both shape and color. We need a small desk or counter in the gallery. And so I doubled up some three quarter inch thick plywood and then cut this tabletop into sort of a weird asymmetrical oval shape. Jigsaw cuts can be a little bit wavy, but I just cleaned up the curves with my belt sander. I used a palm router to give the edges a nice radius and then decided to test out some prototypes for plywood table legs that I've been working on for a while. I've been experimenting with CNC furniture design and made a couple tables that have videos on this channel. But I also wanted to develop a plywood leg that could work with tabletops of any shape or sizes. And so this leg comes in three parts and then easily glues and screws together. The wine swing is made from 2x6 cedar. I drew a little swirl on one of the ends and then cut that out with the jigsaw. I drilled holes for the rope and I don't want the edges to chafe on the rope so I just routed everything out with a roundover bit. For the furniture pieces we want them to match the existing upholstered donut which is a bright chartreuse. So we're using Benjamin Moore Aura paint with a satin finish. Benjamin Moore has over 3,500 unmatchable colors and they make their own ingredients so you can't match their colors in any other brand of paint. And I like satin finish for furniture that's going to come into a lot of human contact. I'm really glad I reinforced the rafters because it gave me a little more surface to screw these loops onto to hang the swing. I'm using a thick nylon rope and just tying some loops on either ends so I can use carabiners to clip the ropes to the loops on the rafters. This gallery renovation was commissioned by local artist Alex Maceda. I'll put a link to her Instagram in the description below. She wanted a place that could both serve as a working studio and to show private collectors her work. A monochromatic color scheme is great for making construction flaws look like intentional texture, but on its own can be a little bit bleak. The chartreuse furniture accents, along with the donut, create some colorful anchors into space, and Alex's artwork does the rest on the walls. Finding a gallery to show your work can be a big challenge for young artists, so we really like this idea of DIYing your own infrastructure so that you can be a little bit more autonomous. The life of a professional artist can be challenging at times, but it doesn't mean it can't be fun and playful as well. Thank you to Benjamin Moore for sponsoring this project, and be sure to check out some of our other videos, and if you haven't subscribed already, we'd really appreciate it if you do. Thanks. Bye.